So next up, we've got Jan Stiborek, who's coming from Prague across, like, I guess that's like nine time zones. He deserves a little extra credit for, for making the trip. Um, in Prague, he is both an employee of Cisco doing some interesting cybersecurity research and also a PhD student there. And he'll be talking a little bit about a very interesting uh, simulation model framework um, that he's been, he's been working on. So let's give uh, Jan a little clap. Thanks, Drew. Uh, so I will start with a little bit of historical overview for most of you. Thing is that in traditional network security, and what I mean is that this traditional network security becomes obsolete. Problem is that parameters are not, not under our control. Not all devices are, are under our control. So in past few years, uh, network security administrators started to deploy intrusion eviction systems. Traditionally, it means that they installed Snort or Bro, uh, and it works. Uh, personally, and please don't stone me, I don't like them. Mainly because they need periodical updates to, to detect new, new attacks. They don't work really very well on the encrypted traffic, and although we have seen a presentation that it is possible to, to deploy them on high-speed networks, it's kind of difficult and it requires a lot of skills to do that. Things that I do like is the anomaly detection systems that uh, works with the NetFlow data. Just to get on the same page, they search for anomalies in the, in the traffic. Uh, they, are independent on the, uh, they, are, they are independent of the known ATEC database, so no patterns required, and they are able to, uh, they are able to detect so-called zero-day attacks. As far as they don't work with the actual contents, there are minimal, minimal privacy issues, and they can be easily deployed on uh, high-speed networks. By NetFlow IPFIX data, I mean this. So basically, the NetFlow contains the starting time, duration, protocol, source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, flex, number of bytes, number of packets. Uh, world is not a perfect place, usually. so. Even anomaly detection and intrusion detection systems uh, suffer several drawbacks. Mainly, they require precise tuning of the internal parameters. That's the first thing. And second thing, if you develop them, if you develop some kind of anomaly detection algorithm, you have quite the difficulties to evaluate and compare the results with uh, anomaly, different anomaly detection, met detection methods. Mainly, the reason is that there is no uh, good evaluation datasets with good ground truth. The, the reasons are quite obvious. You can't run malicious, malicious activity on your, on your corporate network. The lab, lab networks usually do not mimic the statistics of the real world networks, and you can't do the manual labeling because it doesn't scale. So the, the answer that I suggest, the solution that I suggest, is to use the simulation. Usually, uh, people simulate the malicious activity, but problem is that if you want to set up all these internal parameters, you need the legitimate and malicious, malicious, malicious activity as well. So, in this talk, I will focus on the legitimate simulation of the legitimate behavior of the normal user. I will propose three different algorithms, three different uh, approaches with different level of details. So, first approach, the most basic one, is the random sampling. The data are generated completely randomly. But by, by randomly, I mean that there is no dependency between individual NetFlow features. Uh, we assume uniform distribution on, of, on all diff different features. And only restriction is that the number of bytes has to be valid with respect to the number of packets. So that's, these, are the, these are the basics. It's easy to implement. It doesn't require any tuning or any, any training data and can be used as a baseline. For example, if you develop a new anomaly detection algorithm, you can use it as, as let's say, smoke test to, to verify that your anomaly detection methods won't break on this obscure data. Second approach, which is more reasonable and more, and more, and more practical, is the sampling with independent intraflow relations. We call it margin model. Uh, it uses training data to train model of individual NetFlow features. The data are modeled in 
request response pairs. So we at first pre-process the data, uh, we find the request and corresponding response, and train the model on this on this pre-processed data. Uh, it is it is able to partially capture the interflow relations. So for example, the request response ratio and so on. Uh, but the individual features are trained independently and by by non-parametrical PDF estimates. The last approach, the most complicated and most sophisticated one, is called time, time varying joint probability model. Again, it uses the net flows that are, that are processed in request response pairs, and it is able to capture the more complicated aspects of the user's behavior that is missed by the previous two approaches. Mainly, the relation between individual features and the changes in the of the user's behavior during the, during the day, during the time. So the models that we propose has following structure. It's composed of three ma major components. First component controls the human modeling. Second component controls the modeling of the user's operating system. And the last component controls the behavior of the, of the remote service. Note that all features depends on the daytime, so we can model the, the changes in the user's behavior, and the second thing is that the thinking time depends only on daytime. The, the relations between different features of, of the model are, uh, are denoted with this, with this arrow. So you can see that the, that the service, uh, which is the destination port of the request and service, this couple, uh, is the, okay, the target depends on the, on the service, the service model depends on the target, and so on and so on. To formalize this, this model, uh, we derive following, following probabilities. The human modeling is composed of three major probabilities, probability of thinking time given the daytime, probability of service given the daytime, and probably, probability of target or destination IP given the service and the daytime. Service modeling is formalized as probability of client IP, which is the source, uh, client port, sorry, which is the source port of the of, of the request, given the service and the time. And service modeling is the probability of all remaining NetFlow features given the destination IP service and the daytime. To sample new, new values, we first use the, use the training data to estimate the, the probabilities, the underlying probabilities uh, that I've just spoke about, and then use any, any simulation, simulation tool, simulation algorithm to, to, gen, to generate NetFlow data. In our Current implementation, we use histograms and uh, direct sampling to, to, to generate new NetFlow data. A big issue is how to evaluate such algorithm. Uh, as I said, our goal is to develop simulation techniques that is able to, to generate realistic traffic for evaluation of animal detection algorithms. So we have to somehow measure the difference between the simulated and real traffic. We compare the results, and, and then we can select the optimal one. If the, refer it, if the difference is small enough, we can uh, say that the simulated traffic is realistic enough and can be used for, for the evaluation or, or automatic configuration. The criteria that we have used is to basically process the simulated data and the real data with, the, um, with different anomaly detection methods and compare the distribution of anomaly score between, between the, uh, for the simulated data and uh, real-world data. The measure that we have used to, to compare these two distribution is called jensen channel divergence, which is symmetric and smooth version of kullback lieber divergence. And the root square of this, of this uh, number covers all the aspects of the metric. The last part of the evaluation are the data. We have used the, oh, sorry, missed the slide. Uh, the thing that, that we have used for evaluation, the, the detection methods, provides anomaly score in the range from zero to one for every net flow, where zero means not anomalous, don't, uh, not anomalous at all, and one means completely anomalous. The selected algorithms, then the tenth that, that we have selected, can be divided into three major groups. First group are the PCA-based al PCA -based algorithms, Second group is the algorithm that has internal model, but it's not PCA-based. And the last, last group are the algorithms without any internal model. So here are the data. 
uh, we have used the data that were, that were recorded on university campus during one week in April 2013. We have selected set of full-time employees with different user profiles, developers, administrative staff, and so on. I think it was about 70, 70 people. And we've extracted their data from, from the background and, and used, them, used, this, used this data for, for as, a, as a training samples for marginal and time-variant joint probability model. The rest of the traffic was used as uh, background traffic for the anomaly detection methods. So here, here are the results. In the first column is the value of the ancient channel divergence for the time valent joint probability model. Second column uh, contains the value for marginal model, the last column for, for the random sampling, and the real column uh, means or contains the ancient channel divergence for the real traffic. So we have used the two, two consecutive days, processed it with, uh, with uh, anomaly detection algorithms, and, and compute the ENCEN channel divergence on the real data for these two days. So we can, we can get uh, some kind of boundary that says, OK, the data can be closer, but if you are at least this good, uh, it can be used for, for the evaluation of the, of the anomaly detection methods. Here is the result uh, in the in a graph, so so you can see the comparison that the random sampling is maybe even useless. And here is the here is the interesting result. Here you can see the detection of uh, distribution of anomaly score for real, real traffic and the simulated traffic for, for one particle anomaly detection algorithm. So you can visually see that these two distributions are pretty close. So the anomaly detection method is not able to distinguish between the real traffic and the simulated one. So this, this is it for me. Any questions? No question? Awesome. Thank you.